October 17th of 1989, a major earthquake hit Northern California that absolutely rocked the San Francisco Bay Area. Some parts of the city were totally devastated. About 200 buildings in the Marina District suffered major damage. Wood frames were twisted and snapped like toothpicks, houses were thrown off their foundations into the streets, entire buildings simply collapsed. But just a few blocks away, the damage was minimal. And we ask, well, what was the difference? It's because of what was underneath the buildings. Houses in the Marina District were built on landfill, sand and rubble that had been dumped into a swamp. And in what geologists call liquefaction, this type of soil amplified the ground vibrations up to 10 times, making the ground act like quicksand. And it didn't matter how well built a house was above the ground, if the foundation failed when things got rough, that building was coming down. And really, that's the same idea we see in a parable that Jesus taught in Matthew 7. He said, Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell and great was the fall of it. Now, just about every Sunday school lesson you'll ever see on this will have a picture of one house sitting on a boulder by the ocean and the other house sitting like a sandcastle on the beach. And then this huge ocean storm comes up and these gigantic waves will slam into both of the houses. That's the typical picture you see in these lessons, but it's not quite what Jesus was describing here. Jesus was teaching this up in the desert mountain region of Galilee, where the ground was made up of hard, packed down sand, almost as hard and firm as cement. And that's where both men would have built their houses. But we say, didn't Jesus say that the wise man built his house on a rock and not on sand? Well, in the original language, there are two words that can be translated as rock, one referring to a smaller part of a rock, like a stone or even a boulder, and the other one referring to a large rock formation like a cliff or a sheet of bedrock. Jesus uses the second word here, and that's the geography of that region. You have solid sheets of limestone underneath the hard desert sand, and that's how the wise man could have built on the rock. When Jesus tells the same parable in Luke chapter 6, he says that the man dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. You see, because this man was wise, he used good judgment and he thought ahead, and he said, it's worth the extra effort to dig down deep because the best foundation for my house is all the way down on this rock. But the foolish builder didn't think ahead like that. He looked at the surface and said, This ground is already packed down hard enough. Why should I bother to dig? I'll just build my house right here on the top. But in his foolishness, he didn't take into account the risk of flash flooding, which was so common in that desert region. Now, what happens is that a thunderstorm would develop up in the mountains, and it would drop more rain than the ground could absorb. Then all that excess water would come rushing downhill, and even a few tenths of an inch of rain in the mountains could turn into a wall of water up to 20 feet high. Now, that much water coming down all at once would work like a high-speed bulldozer cutting a channel right through the desert floor. So, what happened when the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against both of those houses? Jesus says that the first house did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. But as for the second house, once the sand was cut out from under it, there was no foundation left to hold it up, and everything came crashing down to the ground. And when Jesus says great was the fall of it, he uses a word from which we get our word mega, which points to the completeness and the totality of the foolish man's loss. You see, whether it's a house in the desert being hit by a flash flood, or a house in the Bay Area being hit by an earthquake, the engineering principle is exactly the same. A weak foundation under enough stress will bring the whole structure crashing down. But Jesus didn't teach this so we could all be structural engineers. He's teaching a parable. And a parable is a story that uses common, everyday images to illustrate a spiritual truth. Now, the spiritual truth Jesus is teaching here is that the best foundation for our lives is to hear his words and do them. As he said, everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. You see, it's not just hearing his words, and it's not just studying and even knowing the meaning of his words. There are all kinds of church people today who can look at Scripture in microscopic detail, and they can analyze the theological significance of every last letter. These are people who let the words of Jesus into their heads, but it doesn't get into their hearts where it can really impact their lives. And that's what James warns about in James 1.22, be doers of the word 
and not hearers only. The point is that if you want to live a life that won't fall apart, if you want to be like the wise man who builds on a solid foundation, first of all, you do have to dig deep into the Word to know what Jesus says, but then you've got to go out and do it. You've got to live what He says. That's the foundation that's going to hold you up in the storms of life. Thank you.